I welcome every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. What a great night. I say, what a great night. Amen. Something good will happen to you. Amen. Divine increase. Amen. Where are you? It's coming in your family. Amen. Coming in your life. The Lord is going to turn your life around. Yeah. When you finish, when we finish here, go and write today's date down. Yeah. Something unforgettable. Yeah. Something unthinkable. Yeah. Something incredible. Yeah. All those things that are standing in your way, that cobweb, everything is cleared away today. Raise up those hands and be anointed. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your people tonight. Everyone here, every brother, every sister, every man, every woman. Lord, I pray heavens will open upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Divine increase, heavenly increase, unforgettable increase. Lord, do it in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You can see that God bless you. I'm coming to Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. I'm reading verses 26 and 27. Ezekiel 34. Reading from verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. He's talking about you here. And this is the Almighty God saying, I will make you and the places round about you a blessing. I will cause the shower to come down in his season. Look at this, look at this. There shall be showers of blessing. You didn't know it was there before. It was waiting for you. That tonight, there will be showers of blessing. In your family, there will be showers of blessing. Look at verse 27. Verse 27, it says, And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be saved in the land. And shall know that I am the Lord. Tonight, you will know that He is the Lord. The Lord, your Redeemer. The Lord, your Savior. The Lord, the fruit bearer in your life. And it says, When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve them themselves of them, tonight, you've got it. There's one verse waiting for you in chapter 36. Look at chapter 36 and verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. I lost an amen over them. And they shall increase. Who is he talking about? I said, Who is he talking about? And they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you and unto you, it says, it will do better, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Tonight you will know. Tonight we'll come for a night of increase. And my message to you tonight is the miracle of increase. Miracle of increase. For you. For your family. In your profession. In your personal life. In your ministerial life. Now when we talk of divine increase, it is not limited to having some material things. Yes, material things. Yes, work. Yes, employment. Yes, money. But it's not limited to that. And it is not restricted to any age group. 
the young will increase the old will increase each one can have both revelation and realization of divine increase god's revelation presents us with a new life increase your personal life abundant life increase of strength increase in the fulfillment of the promise of god in your life increase in every positive and profitable achievement i see achievers before me here tonight conquerors before me here tonight and whatever has stood in your way and you have not got what you should have got that thing will be cleared away tonight in jesus name the lord has promised us divine increase increase of blessing increase of fruitfulness increase of wisdom increase of needful supply increase of victory there's going to be addition and multiplication of all good things in your life addition somebody help me shout addition shout multiplication it will happen and it will begin tonight in your life in jesus name very quickly three things i'm looking at number one the promise and the price of divine increase the promise and the price of divine increase number two the position of pillars in desirable increase there is desirable increase i want this i want this i want that i desire this i'm going to attract this to my life but you understand there are pillars on which those desirable increases will stand point number two the position of pillars in desirable increase point number three now our prayer and preparation for distributive increase distributive increase that is it's not a kind of increase you have and you box somewhere and you cage somewhere you distribute your life is going to be a blessing you're going to touch many lives before you pass through this life and many people are going to be blessed through you in jesus name our prayer and preparation for distributive increase number one the promise and the price of divine increase you know something surprises you when people come to church and they look at the promises of god the next thing is prayer and prayer is wonderful god answers prayer and god is going to answer your prayer and there are promises the lord has given us and people are saying pastor give me the promise and then pray for me that's all i want but you know there is a price to pay along with the promise let me explain it to you like this god gives a man who is a farmer he gives him a good land a fertile land and he gives him the crops and everything is ready for him to have an increase and to have a great harvest and then he says lord i thank you for your promise and then he sits in his house or kneels in his house or he comes to church and he says i love god and the promises of god are wonderful and he spends all the time in church praying 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 he never sows the seed will he have a harvest no the price he will pay is that he will take the seed yes he prays he thanks god he blesses the name of god but he goes to that land and he plants the seed harvest will come the promise and the price the provision is free yet we have to make necessary effort to possess and i see possessors before me the promises of wealth in every area of your life then we must work to reap the blessing of divine increase let me put it this way to achieve we must act if you are idle and you fold your hand and you do nothing you're not going to achieve god is on your side the promises of god are there and the blessings of god are there but to achieve 
we must add. To succeed, we must sweat and study. God has given us the brain. He's given us the mind. The books are there. The schools are there. And the opportunities are there. I want to succeed. God has promised to us, thank God you are going to succeed. But to succeed, the price to pay, we must sweat and study. It's like, I want to be righteous. And the promises of God are there. And the word of God is very clear. Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary. But you know what? To be righteous, I must repent. I turn from my sin. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Righteousness will come. To be saved, I must surrender. There is always something to do. The promise is there. And then the price to pay. To reap, we must sow. To harvest, we must plant. To get or to gain, we must give. To triumph, we must travel. That, that's the way life is. And that's the way God has structured everything. That divine increase is available for you. And then, if there's any sickness hindering you, we're going to throw that thing away. If there's any power obstructing your way, we're going to cast that one out. And then inner strength will come. Inner power will come. And you will go out, you will do something tangible, something practical, something profitable, and you are going to succeed. For full, inexhaustible, divine increase, we need partnership with God. Because two cannot work together except they be agreed. But well, thank God, I see people here, you're in agreement with God. I say you're in agreement with God. You cannot fail. You will not fail. Heaven will back you up. Let me show you from the Bible that there is the promise and then there is the price. There is, what is that? The promise and then what is that? And the price to pay. We're coming to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping seed that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful. Somebody there, you are fruitful already. And multiply, did I tell you, multiplication has come. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have, what are you having today? I said, what are you going to have? Nothing will crush you. Nothing will oppress you. Nothing will stop you in this somewhat journey of divine increase in Jesus' name and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living sea that creepeth upon the earth. You can see very clearly there the intention of God, the promise of God, the provision of God, the power of God. But what a minute. The promise is there. Look at chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. And God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to do what? Tell me out aloud. To dress it and to keep it. That's the price. There is the revelation that God is going to bless and God is going to bless you. And then there is the responsibility. There is something to do. He gives the promise and then he tells us what the price is. And look at Psalm 104. Psalm 104. I first of all read verse 1. Psalm 104. Read verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and 
majesty. But now run down to verse 13. He watereth the hills from his chambers. That's talking about God. Because he wants to make the earth, the world, a good place for you to live. And he surrounds you with every blessing. And then it says, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. The earth is satisfied in the mind of God, in the intention of God, in the program of God. He wants everyone, literally everyone, to be satisfied. You are going to be satisfied. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the price of for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine you see that your face will shine and bread which strengtheneth man's heart then he goes on to say the trees of the Lord are full of sap, and the cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted. Now, verse 23. Verse 23. Are you there? Tell me if you are there. What do you see there? In you say one, two, three, go. You see that? You see that? That's the price. That's the price. As we read all the other verses, it's talking about the provision of God. It's talking about the promise of God. And, you know, believers can throw their hands in there and say, praise the Lord. God is good. God is wonderful. And God is going to bless me. There's going to be satisfaction. And he pours the rain down. He pours the blessings down. Everything is all right. And then we are told now, get out of your house and go to work there is a price to pay i pray god will open our eyes that will not just leave things to be going like that and then say god will do everything god will do everything he has given us something to do he will bless the work of your hand man goeth forth unto his work there must be something to do to cause this divine increase there must be something you apply your strength to you apply your life to to cause this divine increase man goeth unto his work and to his labor until 11 a.m until 12 noon until i'm tired i'm going back home until when until the evening he stretches it out that's enough to do and you need to put on effort and you need to put on your strength and you need to have a drive and say i am going to succeed thank god i see successful people there look at job chapter 8 job chapter 8 i'm reading here from verse 5 the promise and the price the promise and the price look at this look at this in uh, job chapter 8 verse 5 if thou wouldest seek unto god betimes and make thy supplication to the almighty if thou wert pure must take every kind of sin away every kind of defilement away every evil we must take away so that the strength of the lord will be ours and the provision of the lord will be ours if thou wert pure and upright surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous look at verse 7 this one is for you say it is for me though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end should greatly increase make it personal now though my beginning was small yet my latter end should greatly increase you want to say that again personal
don't despise the day of small beginnings. You wake up in the morning and there's something to do. Don't say, I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I'm not satisfied with my assignment. It is too small. It is below my dignity. It is below my certificate. It is below my education. It is below my training. Don't worry about that. Get it done. And do it better than anybody around can do it. And put your strength, put your skill, and put everything you've got into it. And the Lord is telling you, if you do that small thing very well, and you will do it well. Yeah. At home, do it well. In your place of work, do it well. Anything you're doing, let there be some extra that you put into love, excitement, joy. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Yes, I know it is small. Yes, I know it is small. But though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end, thy latter end shall greatly increase. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Look at this. It says in verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, I don't have this. Don't worry about that. I need this. Don't worry about that. I'm still, uh, you know, in debt. Don't worry about that. You put God first you'll be surprised. I said you'll be surprised. Even from tonight, from tonight, as you put God first, as you are going in, provision will meet you on the way. Increase will meet you on the way. It says, it says here, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And how many things? All these things shall be added unto you. Who said that? Jesus said that. Can he lie? Did he lie to you? If you do what he said, you are going to have the result of obedience in your life. Seek ye first. I'm happy you are here tonight. Are you happy I'm here too? I'm happy you are there. You know, all that road and all the difficulties, all the challenges and the bottleneck there, the traffic jam there, and you said, I will be there. I must be there. God will honor you. You're seeking first the kingdom of God. There are other things you could have said, I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you said, I'll put God first. You'll not be here tonight in vain. He will add unto your life. Addition in your life. Multiplication in your life. Who am I talking to over there? Be it unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the position of pillars in a desirable increase. You know, all those desirable desires, there are pillars, pillars. Look at this building, for example. There are pillars on which the building stands. If you're going to have a little shed, well, a little pillar will do. If you're going to have a magnificent building, very large and very heavy and stable and solid, you need some real stable pillars. Let me show you in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 1. Proverbs chapter 9, verse... Tell me the verse. Verse 1. Wisdom has builded a house... She has hewn out her, tell me, seven pillars. That's it. The pillars are there. And as we talk about divine increase, and we're talking about definite increase, and we're talking about desirable increase, there are pillars. Pillars. And what pillars is God looking for? Number one, number one, increased faith increased faith in uh, Luke chapter 17 Luke chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 5 17 verse 5 and the apostles said unto the Lord tell me increase our faith they knew they knew if there's going to be any increase in their lives at all increase our faith you know, when you have faith in God, 
Maybe you trusted him a little before, but now you want to increase your life, expansion in your life, enlargement in your life, progress in your life. Are you asking for more? You're asking for more. You're asking for more. The pillar on which you can build that is increased faith. I used to trust God, but now I'll trust God more. A step at a time. A little step, a little more faith. And you know, that desirable increase will come in your life. You know why? Because there's a principle. The principle. If you're going to do anything, I'm going to enlarge it now. Number one, you have faith in God. Number two, you have faith look at this, in yourself. You know, some young people went to school and they were, it was the first day in school and the teacher said, introduce yourself and this one stood up and you know, looked down and said, I am so and so. He was shy. Another one introduced herself, I am so and so. We live in a backward community. I came to school today. And then the last boy stood up, he squared his shoulders. I can almost see you, that's a person like you. I said it's like you. He looked up at the teacher, eyeball to eyeball. He said, I am Johnny. I'm going to succeed because God didn't make a dummy. I'm going to lead this class because God didn't put me at the tail. And guess what? He had faith in God. And he had faith in God that he did not make him a dummy. God did not make me a failure. God did not make me a coward. God did not make me, you know, somebody under the table. I've lost some people there. He made me a conqueror. He made me a success. He made me a captain. Faith in God, faith in yourself. Faith in people. Faith in people. We cannot live alone. That person is going to help you. Therefore, have trust in them. Stretch for the hand. Have a good attitude towards them. Faith in God, faith in yourself, faith in others. Lord, increase our faith. That's a pillar. And the Lord is going to increase you in Jesus' name. Number two, increased love. Increased love. You know, if you are going to do anything at all, people look at your attitude. They look at your life. If there's no love, it's less hatred. You're always criticizing, always saying, you know, they didn't do this well. And you don't love anybody. And you're saying, I will love them when they love me. Show the love first. When you look at the mirror, the mirror reflects somebody to you. And that's yourself. If you are frowning, the person in the mirror will frown back to you. If you are kind of uh, depressed, the person in the mirror will be depressed as well. Cheer up and love people and touch the lives of people. And once there's increased love, that increase you are talking about, that increase will come. Look at 4 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 12. It says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love. I thought I was here at Amen. And the Lord make you to increase and to abound in love one to another and toward all men, even as we do towards it. Number one, increase faith. Number two, increase love. Number three, increased righteousness. In Second Corinthians, in Second Corinthians chapter nine, I'm reading from verse ten. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse ten. It says, Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Increase the fruit of your righteousness. You know, some people have an idea. If I'm going to increase, I have to cut corners. If I'm going to increase, I have to cheat. If I'm going to increase, I have to be dubious. If I want to increase, I have to be fraudulent. Not at all, not at all. The Lord will not back up on righteousness. You want increase? I said you want increase? Thank God it's coming. I said thank God it's coming. 
Now is the time to go back to Calvary and to say, Lord, help me. There must be an increase of faith, number one, an increase of love, number two, an increase of righteousness, number three, number four, an increase of strength, an increase of strength. If the load you want to carry is heavier than what you carried yesterday, then today you need an increased strength. If the journey you want to face, you want to run, if it's longer, farther than the one you ran yesterday, you have to have increased strength. If you're climbing a higher mountain today than you climbed yesterday, you have to have a greater strength. And that's the reason why we need increased strength. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, you are going to be stronger today than yesterday. You're going to run faster today than you ran yesterday in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm going to read from verse 28. Has thou not known, you will know. Has thou not heard, you will hear. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary, neither there is no searching of his understanding. Look at this, look at this. He gives, he gives. I said he giveth, he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no mind, what does he do? He increases strength, he increases strength and tonight it will increase your strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord. Are they there tonight? I said are they there tonight? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Why? Because in verse 29, they have increased strength. And when you have increased strength, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not fade. Number five, increased knowledge. Increased knowledge. A teacher has been teaching in, uh, you know, primary one or class one, class two, and is complaining. Why is the principal keeping me in class one, class two? My friend, if you have increased knowledge, then they'll bring you to the next class. But if you don't have increased knowledge and you're still at where you were, all these 10 years you have been teaching you are going to remain there but if you want increase increase promotion somebody there i said promotion somebody there i said progress you must have increased knowledge look at this colossians colossians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 10 colossians chapter 1 verse 10 it says that she might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and tell me increasing in the knowledge of god increasing in the knowledge of god you must know today what you didn't know yesterday you know if you gave just a few minutes every day to learn something new to get a new promise and to get a new understanding and to get a new insight a few minutes every day little drops of water make a mighty ocean you have great knowledge and you have increased knowledge uh, look at there's something here i must show you proverbs chapter 19 proverbs chapter 19 your increase has come say my increase has come in Proverbs chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 2. Look at this, look at this. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. That the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. You're going through this life, you don't even know the, anything about the, about the next neighbor. And you're witnessing and you know, you're preaching to other people. You don't know their needs. You don't know their desires. You don't know anything. You don't know what they're going through. That the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. The farmer ought to know about the soil. 
the farmer ought to know about the crop the farmer ought to know about the appropriate crop to plant in a particular place that's how we're going to get increase because we must have number one increased faith is coming number two increased love number three increased righteousness number four increased strength number five increased knowledge number six increased learning increased learning how do i have increased knowledge without increased learning i must take interest in learning and knowing what i didn't know because it is through that those pillars increased faith increased love increased righteousness increased strength increased knowledge increased uh, increased learning that i will have the desirable increase i'm coming to chapter 9 of proverbs proverbs chapter 9 verse 9 it says give instruction to a wise man and he will yet be wiser you are wise I said you are wise from tonight you are going to be wiser and teach look at this look at this verse 9 and teach a just man and you will increase in learning increase in learning number seven increased labor increased labor now you are ready because that divine increase will come by addressing yourself to the duty of life addressing yourself to the challenges of life don't run from difficulty you know what if you run from difficulty by the time you come back tomorrow that difficulty has increased if you run from danger you run from challenges by the time you come next week that challenge has already increased and then you run again to say i'll come back by the time you come back that thing has increased and you keep running you keep running stay where you are you are going to succeed there nobody will run you out of town because God has destined you for the divine increase and as you stay there and say this will be done it will be done yeah. who will do it I said who will do it yes God will do it but who is he going to use he's going to use you look at this look at this we're looking at uh, first Corinthians chapter 3 First Corinthians chapter 3, I'm reading from verses 6 and 7. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. I have planted and Apollos, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. We have to do something. You have to do something. Laziness out of your life in Jesus' name. I don't know, just staying there and sitting there from morning till night. My friend, why are you here? Why are you there? Nobody gave me anything. Go and make it happen. I said, go and make it happen. If they didn't, if nobody employs you, go and pray to God and then use your brain and use your mind and become an employer and become a director and become a manager. Can it happen? You'll come back with testimony. And so we understand that that divine increase is starting tonight, but we have a price to pay. The divine increase is coming tonight, but there are pillars of that divine increase. I come to point number three now. Point number three, our prayer and preparation for distributive increase. I'm coming back again to Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34 I'm reading from verse 26 again and I will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in a season this is your season of increase your season of blessing your season of power and strength there shall be showers of blessing the rain falls for everyone and the rain is going to fall and it's going to touch your house it's going to touch your family and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in the land you will be safe in the land protected in the land and shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke. Every yoke in your life, 
every hindrance in your life broken tonight in jesus name and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them you will not remain a slave to anything slave to hard drugs cancelled slavery to men or women cancelled slavery to whatever power that held you back until this day you are delivered in jesus name now chapter 36 we're looking at chapter 36 and i'm looking at verse 11 this is yours i said this is yours instead of just amen say this is mine and i will multiply upon you man and beast amen and they shall increase and they shall increase your supporters will increase and those who are going to push you up lift you up they will increase in jesus name and bring fruit and i will settle you and i will settle you confusion is gone it says i will settle you after your old estate I will do. Heaven says he will do. The Almighty God says he will do. Heaven says he will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. That same chapter where God said, I will. I will, I will. Look at this. Verse 37. Verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. You know, some people, the attitude they have is God said He will do it. Okay, at His own time, it will be done. If any wind blows and blows their sheds down, they say God's will be done. If anything comes upon them and all the increase they were expecting, all the increase is not coming, they say, well, he is almighty. Whatever he wants to do, whatever he doesn't want to do, they don't pray and they don't understand that Satan may be after them wanting to cancel what God has promised them. When you pray tonight, you will knock the hand of Satan away from your life. That's why he says in verse 37, God says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired up by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will, I will, I will increase them with men like a flock. He said, I will do it, I will do it, but tonight every prayer you pray will be answered. Pray, pray, and God will answer. But you know, I went to school, and uh, you know, there was some boy in our school, very sharp, very intelligent, and very talented. And he was a science, uh, you know, student. And I, when all the rest of people be reading, he'll, you know, he knew how to play guitar. He'll be playing guitar and praise, praise the Lord, wonderful God, and wonderful, wonderful songs. And those of us who are reading, and then sometimes we'll challenge him and say, ah, so and so, I don't want to mention his name. Uh, why are you not? He said, God has promised me. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Well, we're going to study. And then when you are coming back, he's still playing the guitar by the side of the road uh, over there at uh, your university. And then eventually, uh, they were took exam. Guess what? Brilliant student. Great student. He failed. Was that the fault of God? Whatever you sow, you reap. If you sow nothing, you reap nothing. If you sow corn, you reap corn. If you sow rice, you reap. If you sow idleness, you reap failure. You will not sow idleness. It's good to pray, but you know what the Lord is telling us? Pray and plan. Pray and plan. You have to plan. He who fails to plan, plans to fail. 
you will plan. I said you will plan. What does that mean? You ask yourself, where am I going? What increase am I expecting? What destination am I expecting? I spot out, I locate, I identify that destiny, that destination. What road will take me there? That's planning. And what avenues or means do I have that will take me there? A friend, a neighbor, a counselor, a helper who can help me. I know where I'm going and then they all come to support me. I'm planning. How am I going to make use of them? When do I start? How do I move on? You pray and you plan. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 27. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27. Look at this, look at this. It says in verse 27, Prepare thy work without, and make it feed for thyself in the field. Afterward, build thine house. Do the planning, do the planning, and then after that, build. Number two, you pray and you plant. Look at, look at a farmer, he wants increase, and then he got all those promises. He says, praise the Lord, I'm going to increase. I had the pastor say, you come back next time, you're going to have your testimony. And then he's a farmer, he plants nothing. And he says, the pastor said, and the pastor prayed, everything is going to be all right. And then when the other farmers are reaping their crops, the man has nothing. And he said, the pastor told me a lie. Did I tell him a lie? No. The word of God is true. But the man did not plant. You pray and you plant. Tell me, you pray and you plant. We're looking at John. We're looking at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 24. It says, very late, very late, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. That's the process of germination. It says, it abides alone. But if it die, if you plant it and it falls to the ground, it bringeth forth much fruit. I see fruitful people there. Number three, pray and purge. Pray and purge. You know, there's a way somebody who is at the top, there's a way they talk, there's a way they dress, there's a way they look, there's a way they interact, there's a way they behave, there's a way they control themselves, there's a way they comport themselves. Put yourself there because that's where you're going. I said that's where you're going. If I add the increase I was waiting for, how will I act? How will I talk? If there are things in your life that will not match that position, will not match that increase, you purge them. You say, come cross, don't talk that way, I won't talk that way. And come cross, don't look that way, I won't look that way. Come cross, they don't behave that way, I won't behave that way. There is a purging. And you do it, don't allow anybody to come and do it for you, to cut this and cut this. Do it yourself. You know that this is where I'm going, and you're going to get there. You pray and plan, you pray and plan, you pray and purge. Look at this in John chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 2. John chapter 15, verse 2, Every plant in me that beareth no fruit, he taketh away. And every plant that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. More fruit in your life. More fruit in your family. Number four, pray and pursue. Pray and pursue. You know, in life, you have to understand that if you want something, the success will not just fall on you like a ripe or poor fruit falling from the tree. It's something you have a drive inside you. You are a man with a goal, a man with a destiny, a man that is pursuing. And sometimes you are even almost tired, but you will not give up. I said you will not give up. 
that thing you're looking for, you must pursue. You pray, prayer is necessary. You get God involved because he has promised. And you're depending upon the promise of God, but then you pray and you pursue. Look at Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8, your victory has come. Your success has come. But you pray and you pursue. I'm looking at Judges chapter 8 verse 4. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him. Finch. Finch. Don't give up. Finch. Don't go back home. Finch. Don't say the end has come. Finch. And yet pursuing, yet pursuing, yet pursuing. You keep on pursuing. God give you, will give you the divine energy, the divine power. You are going to achieve. Yeah. Over there, the gallery, where are you? I said you are going to achieve. Yeah. You pray and you plant. You pray and you plant. You pray and you purge. You pray and you pursue. You pray and you press on. You press on. You press on. Have you heard about uh, these uh, people? They, was, they were swimming. It was a contest. And you know, this one got to the middle and he said, I don't think I can make it. And he dropped out. Another one came to almost three quarters of, uh, you know, the distance. I, I'm, my air is getting out of me. It's like I'm going to faint. I'm feeling dizzy. But there was this other one that said, just one more stroke. Just one more stroke. Just one. He was tired. Just one stroke. Just one stroke. And he got to the finishing line. I'm going to get to the finishing line. I said, I'm going to get to the finishing line. That day comes when you appear tired. But you said, that's my goal. That day comes when you appear fainting. You said, that's my goal. That day comes when it appears that everything is upside down. Just one more stroke. Just one more day. I will see you at the finishing line. Hey, look at look at Philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 in Philippians chapter 3 I'm reading here from verse 13 and verse 14 Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 verse 14 brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do do that one thing do that one assignment this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before Verse 14, tell me, verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing on. I said I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You're going to be an achiever. You are going to be a success. That increase the Lord is going to give you in Jesus' name. Number one, pray and plan. Number two, pray and plan. Number three, pray and purge. Number four, pray and pursue. Number five, pray and press on. Number six, pray and and pour yourself out. Pray and pour yourself out. You know, in this life, it is service, sacrificial service that is rewarded. You want to get, give. You want possession, pour yourself out. Help people, touch lives, lift people up, help them. Pour yourself out. Look at Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four, and I'm reading from verse one. Second Kings chapter four, verse one. It says in uh, verse one, and there cried a certain woman of the of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, The servant my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord 
and the creditors, the creditors come to take unto him my two sons to be bond men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? You must have something. You have a brain, you have something. You have eyes to see, you have something. You have faith in God, you have something. You have something in your heart that is saying, life is not ending here. I must still get to the place I'm getting to. You have something, I have something. You have some education, I have something. You have some deposit, I have something. You have some foundation, I have something. You have salvation, you have something. You have the promises of God, you have something. And you have the almighty God backing you up and saying, I created you, I molded you, I redeemed you. I brought you into this life to get something done. You have more than something, you are going to succeed. It says, what hast thou in the house? And he said, that handmaid has not anything in the house, said, except a pot of oil. Then he said, go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt and thou shalt tell me out aloud and thou shalt you must pour it out pour yourself out pour yourself out. keep on sweating helping people sweating lifting up people sweating pouring out your life your talent everything you've got to other people's lives and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full your life will be full so so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and i will pour out and i will pour out and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet another vessel and he said unto her, There is not a vessel more and the oil stage. When there's no other empty vessel to pour into, everything will stop. But as long as there are people you can pour your life into, a neighbor is there, render a helping hand, a neighbor is there, go and visit them, and, and just make people happy in life, and contribute something you know, into somebody's life, and keep pouring out, and keep pouring out. As you are pouring out, heaven will be pouring upon you. <laughs> Number seven, pray and persevere. Pray and persevere. This is not the age of getting tired so easily, giving up so easily. I cannot, I cannot take a pen and look at your dictionary. I don't mean the physical one, your emotional dictionary and your life dictionary and your you know kind of subconscious dictionary and cancel out cannot i can i can i can i can do how many things all things through christ which strengtheneth me it will strengthen you in jesus name pray and persevere don't give up don't give up i will not give up i said i will not give up Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 26, and he said, let me go, for the day breaketh, and he said, I will not let you go, except that bless me. I came for blessing, I must get the blessing. I came for increase, I must get the increase. I came for healing, I must get the I will not let you go, except thou bless me. And the blessing of the Lord came upon him. And God is still the same. And Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That blessing is now your turn. I said it's now your turn. Where are you? I said it's your turn. 
Why don't you get up tonight and say, Lord, I came for divine increase. I will not let you go. I will not let you go except you bless me. Except you bless me. The promise and the prize. The promise and the prize is available. It's available. The Lord is going to touch your life right now. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Which area do you want to increase in your life? Blessing in your life. Increase of your righteousness increase of your health increase in the work of your hand increase in the program of the project you have tonight is a night tonight is a night let there be increase tonight increase tonight increase tonight increase your faith increase your faith don't give up increase your love love people love people increase that righteousness increase your strength they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. You will run, you'll not be weary, you'll walk, you will not faint. Increase your knowledge of the word of God. Learn the promises. A promise a day keeps the problem away. A promise a day keeps the difficulties away. Tell the Lord. I know from tonight there's going to be divine increase in my life. Tell the Lord if there's anything to push out, anything to push away, anything to take away, which will not make you a conqueror, will not make you an overcomer, put it away and say, Lord, now I am ready for divine increase. I am ready for definite increase in my life. I am ready. For desirable increase I'm ready for double increase I'm ready for distributive increase I'm ready for definite increase it's coming it's coming don't look back don't say I don't think I can make it don't plant and uproot the following day have it today have it today. Have it today. And say, Lord, it's mine. Lord, it's mine. Lord, it is mine. And as you go out of this place tonight, you're going with that confidence. I will make it. I will make it. I will make it. Heaven is on your side. God is on your side. The Bible is on your side. The people of God are on your side. I will. I will. I will. Go out. Go out. Pray and press on. Pray and press on. Pray and press on. That divine increase is available. Anything going to hinder you, the Lord will cleanse away, take away. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the conquerors say, Amen. Let the achievers say, Amen. Increase in your life. Power in your life. Success in your life. That mountain, you will climb that mountain. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everyone here, every child, every, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, every brother, every sister. Lord, I pray this will be the beginning of divine increase in every life in Jesus' name. Anything that stands in the way of anyone. I pray, Lord, the power of God from heaven will sweep it away in Jesus' name. Take all the hurdles away. All the problems away. All the challenges away. And Lord, I pray that destiny, that destination you have for everyone here, give them the strength. Give them the vision. Give them the revelation give them the power they will get there in Jesus name any hindrance on their way take it away hindrance of sickness take it away hindrance of poverty take it away 
Hindrance of discouragement, take it away. Hindrance of past of darkness, take it away. Hindrance of any yoke, take it away. Lord, I pray, touch everyone tonight. I pray, Lord, your promises will become yes and amen in every life. Strengthen them in the inner man. And brighten their vision spiritually. And Lord, I pray you will take them to that place where there's total, complete, overflowing, divine, increase in every life in Jesus' name. Joy in every heart. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Total achievement for everyone. Victory for everyone. Divine increase. Desirable increase. Definite increase, heavenly increase, appropriate increase for everyone. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. I got it. I got it. I will see it in your life. God bless you.